A Ukrainian drone struck an important arms depot inside Russia, the Ukraine military said Wednesday, three weeks after another drone blasted a major Russian armory and three days after a drone smashed into a key oil terminal in Russia-occupied Crimea. The Tuesday night strike targeted an arsenal in Russia's Bryansk border region where missiles and artillery munitions were stored, including some that had been delivered by North Korea, a Ukrainian general staff statement said. Hugely powerful glide bombs that have terrorized civilian areas of Ukraine and bludgeoned Ukrainian army defenses were also kept at the arsenal, located 115 kilometers from the Ukrainian border, and some of the ammunition was stored in the open, it said. Striking such arsenals creates serious logistical problems for the Russian army, thus significantly reducing offensive capabilities, the statement said. Russia is expending enormous amounts of ammunition as it makes its advantage in artillery shells felt on the battlefield in a war of attrition that is approaching its 1,000-day milestone next month. Its slow but relentless drive deeper into Ukraine's eastern Donetsk region is stretching Ukraine's resources just as some of Kiev's key western partners are being distracted by domestic concerns and Middle East wars. Ukraine is building up its own arms industry, and authorities have identified drones as an important aspect of that. Among the key areas identified are drones for our army, and this should be a supply that not only constantly increases in volume, but also evolves and develops in line with the demands of war," Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky said in a video address late Tuesday about weapons production. The Russian military has also improved its drones' capabilities and expanded their use. Russian drones targeted Ukraine's southern Odessa region for the third night in a row on Tuesday, injuring five people, regional governor Ola Kuyper said. However, Ukraine's air defenses have proved resilient against drones. The Ukrainian Air Force said Wednesday it shot down 21 out of 22 drones that Russia launched over three Ukrainian regions. Russian President Vladimir Putin has stopped flying to Sochi out of fear for his own life after drone attacks on objects in the city, the Russian publication Agents Vo reported citing sources. Can Ukrainian UAVs really pose a threat to the Russian president's plane? Charter 97 media outlet asked this question to the Ukrainian military political observer of the information resistance group Alexander Kovalenko. I will start with the distance from the nearest zone of probable launch of Ukrainian drones to Sochi. If we are talking about the Kherson region, then this is about 700 kilometers. If we were talking about the Zaporizhia region, 500 kilometers. When drones are launched from the territory of Ukraine to the Russian Federation at a certain point, even over temporarily occupied territories, they begin to be recorded by air defense systems. This is not a surprise factor. They are recorded, Alexander Kovalenko said. According to him, the average speed of a UAV is 180 kilometers an hour. It takes about three hours to fly 500 kilometers to Sochi. And here the question arises. Can they warn Flight 1 three hours in advance by recording a Ukrainian drone that is heading to Sochi? Of course they can. I don't think that the reason Putin stopped flying to Sochi is Ukrainian drones. I have serious doubts about this. If Ukraine had, for example, ballistic missiles with a range of 1,000 kilometers or even cruise missiles with a range of up to 700 kilometers, then in that case, yes, we could say that there is a certain risk. But if we are talking about drones, a rather slow target, then the question is different. To shoot down or not? To shoot down, he added. Alexander Kovalenko said that Russian air defense in matters of destroying Ukrainian drones, as we have seen recently, to put it mildly, does not demonstrate a particularly high level of effectiveness, but an aircraft at a speed of 700 to 800 kilometers an hour will easily escape from a drone, having received a warning of one to two hours. The frame shows a man in camouflage with his face half covered who did not introduce himself personally but only said that he was recording a video on behalf of the 810th Brigade. 
In a nervous voice, the man in military uniform told the truth about how the Russians themselves are squeezing food and even electronic warfare systems from their own people, buying them with money from the occupiers themselves. I won't say anything about the humanitarian aid that is coming to us, but unfortunately not all of it is coming. God bless it. Food and medicine, that's okay. The most important thing that was coming to us was the electronic warfare, for which we raised money as a team and my parents raised money for it, among other things, the man said in the video. Then the occupier explained who the Kadyrovites were and what they did. Recently, we were supposed to have the electronic warfare system. Do you know where it is now? It is installed on the Tiger vehicle of the Akmat unit and we were left naked before leaving without anything. That's life. The Kadyrovites are Chechen militias with a sinister reputation deployed alongside Russian troops in Ukraine. Ukrainians have said that the Chechens have been among the most brutal of the Kremlin's invading forces. Ramzan Kadyrov, a Putin ally who rules Chechnya, is accused of rights abuses, including torture and executions, proudly posts videos of his men fighting in Ukraine on Telegram. He alleges they are fighting the Nazis of Kyiv using the Kremlin's language. The son of a Chechen independence leader who switched sides to join the Russians, Ramzan Kadyrov is President Vladimir Putin's protégé and is regularly accused of shocking human rights violations in the Muslim-majority Republic of Chechnya. Kadyrov welcomed Putin's invasion of Ukraine and immediately said he would send forces there. Aurelia Kampana, an expert in political violence and Russia at the University of Laval in Canada, said the deployment of the Kadyrovtsi is part of Moscow's psychological war on Ukraine. The announcement of the entry into the war of Kadyrov's troops and the propaganda that surrounds it are part of this effort to destabilize the enemy, she said.